So I think we're the odd <laughs> couple entertainment for the afternoon. Uh, I'm Mira Cannon. I, I run an organization, the Center for American Progress, which is uh, a progressive organization, a little center left uh, in the debate, but really focused on these issues. Uh, and I'll, I'll perhaps just start off, and, and I hope that, as in the past, we'll find some bipartisan comedy in, in our focus. The previous discussion was really uh, well time to, to get to the discussion of what we can do in opportunity. First, we should explain the past, which oh, was, yes. in 2008, I was the policy director for John McCain's presidential campaign, <laughs> and Nero was the winner, and so um, we've but, had a past. But it had nothing to do with Doug, <laughs> I was going to say that. Uh, Doug, do you want to say what you do now? So I'm president of the American Action Forum. It's a five-year-old think tank, which is center-right mm -hmm. and aspires to be as influential and successful as the Center for American <laughs> Progress. That's and, and is. Um, so I, I'll just start off with a few thoughts that really hopefully builds off of the discussion we just that everyone just heard, which is the really important role uh, the private sector can have in ensuring that we address challenges of youth unemployment. I'm sure people have heard all the statistics already of long-term unemployment for young people really contributes $22,000 a year and less in income. Um, so it's a real challenge that we have to address if we care about not only those folks, but also long-term economic growth. Um, because of the changing nature of work, we have seen a little less investment in skills development. Um, companies in the United States are investing less because employees move more often. Yep. So one thing that we focused on at CAP is idea of apprenticeships, things in which you can have the public and private sector uh, really uh, work together on to support uh, ensuring that companies can provide skills training and development for particularly young workers, especially those who are not college bound. Um, as we have a renaissance in manufacturing in the United States, uh, energy prices come down, there is a bigger focus on some of these skills. So, uh, that's, that's one area that we've been focused on that's really, we hope, creates bipartisan support. Um, I, I think this is a great idea. In the end, success in America comes down to work and skills. The difference between uh, poverty and non-poverty in the U.S. is work, uh, and the, the difference between success and, and less success in the labor market is skills. And we need to connect people uh, to skills and work uh, at a young age and keep them there. Uh, apprenticeships are very successful in doing this. There's some pilot programs in South Carolina that yep. have been enormously successful. I think it's underappreciated in the U.S. just how much of an advance we can make on this. And for me, you know, I'm an economist, so I can strangle the life out of any conversation. That's my skill. Um, <laughs> but you do it so rarely. Thank you. But um, uh, here's what I think the challenge is and what, I'm, what I, I think we all have to focus on. Uh, historically, after the post-war, per capita incomes grew rapidly enough in the U.S. that the standard of living doubled basically every 30 years, which meant in a working career, you could imagine a family sending their, their children to college or, or buying a bigger home or having a, a vacation in a way that they never could before. And if you look forward, the projected growth rates are uh, a full percentage point or more below that, that rate, and that means standards of living won't rise enough, and, and the notion of the opportunities we have will be diminished. I think we need to early infuse our workers with those skills and, and education so that we can reverse that and maintain the tradition of American opportunity because that's the foundation of all the things that, that have brought us to, the, to be the most successful uh, place on the planet. Yeah, and just, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think one of the challenges we're seeing um, is that we have, had, we have had levels of growth over the last decade, not, not what we would like, and I think we all recognize that we need higher growth rates. Yep. Um, but we also have a little bit of challenge of distri distribution because we've had productivity gains, mm -hmm. but they aren't really getting shared across the economy so well. And that's why I think the skills issue is so critical. Crucial. Because you really see that low-income workers, there have been productivity gains, but they've seen little share. And um, that productivity gains, the fact that like there's more, uh, more value coming to employers, to the economy writ large per worker, it hasn't really actually translated to uh, wage or income growth for them. Um, and so, but you see, you see some of that translation at higher skill levels. And that's why I think apprenticeships are such an important mm -hmm. issue because you want to create 
some avenues up. Um, we've talked a lot at CAP about how to make access to higher education um, more affordable, but also if you think about, you know, I think in some areas you have to think a little bit more openly about how um, access to higher education has really become what access to high school was 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. And how do you create a pathway for more and more people? I think it's, it, it's very important to, to, to go back to the K-12 system. And, and yeah. um, after you know, a decade of measurement, uh, the United States can now identify failure in its elementary and high schools uh, down to the pupil, the teacher, mm -hmm. the principal, but, but we still have a remarkable amount of underperformance. And, and that, I think, um, would go a long way towards solving a lot of the higher ed problems. Because if you want to predict who is going to have an overwhelming student loan burden, who's unlikely to complete college uh, in four years or at all, find someone who needs remedial work when they walk in the door. I mean, that's one of the leading predictors of, of trouble. And that, that's a, that can be traced back earlier in the system. So I think the K to 12 thing is also a tremendous opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, this is an era where we have uh, all these amazing educational entrepreneurs who are starting up schools of different uh, character, mm -hmm. teaching methods, um, and um, public, private, uh, not-for-profit, profit. I mean, there's everything out there. And, and finding the best practices there that work, I think, is something that's really important. Yeah, and in, in, some, in, in an area we might have additional agreement is ensuring that there's uh, high standards in the K through 12 yes. system. I mean, one of the things, if you want to make sure that people are getting the college ready to learn, I mean, college where they need to be and not without remedial education, we do need, we do need better skills development uh, K through 12. And yep. um, one of the big issues with the Common Core is it's really focusing on things like critical learning skills, um, which are such a, such a huge demand issue in today's economy. Um, and yet, you know, there's, there has been a lot of conflict on, on issues like that. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I have been mystified by how the Common Core became such an, a target of political uh, venom. But um, you can't, again, there's a calculation that, that sort of illustrates how important this is. Um, suppose we raised the uh, ed educational attainment of our K-12 education system not to the level of something exotic like you know the Chinese and, who's, and people who speak Mandarin, but just Canada. I mean, they're almost like us, so yeah. just get to Canada. 20% increase in everyone's wages, mm -hmm. trillion dollars a year. Right. It's unbelievable. So anything, Common Core, other approaches to accountability and achievement, raising achievement it, is imperative. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think that ought to be something we all agree is, is in the interest of our future. Yeah, well, well, like, well, people will like take note that we're agreeing on all these things. One other area that we're working on um, in this space is, uh, is uh, actually also issues around national service. Um, which is also ha has in the past been a, a bipartisan issue and then sometimes been a little bit more partisan. But one, one um, particularly in issue times where you have high youth unemployment and high unemployment writ large, national service can be an opportunity to, to ensure that kids or young people are getting skills they need um, as the market is in a particularly def tough spot. And then uh, so we've, we've toyed with ideas around, or proposed ideas, I should say, around counter-cyclical expansions of national service so that, so that people really are out of the labor market instead of just faced with long-term unemployment. Um, and, uh, and see that as an opportunity to really ensure that it's another way in which people do get skills mm -hmm. um, as they transition from uh, one part of education into the, the labor force. I think uh, a mantra should be that we should you know, look for skills at every uh, opportunity, but we also should look to make everything as pro-work as possible in yeah. the United States. We, we need to have you know, a social safety net that doesn't discourage people who want to get to work, want to work more, and, and you know, sadly, it is among the, the low-income individuals <laughs> that we see the highest effective tax rates in the United States, sometimes 60, 65%, and, and we just need to worry about that enormously. There are, there are, for example, some proposals that I've looked at on uh, changing the way we think about uh, uh, minimum wages, uh, uh, which is a great way to have a fight, you know, propose an increase <laughs> in the minimum wage, uh, but instead take seriously the proposal that says if you work full time, so 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year, 2,000 hours, you should not be in poverty. And you can design uh, a system where we, 
where we can deliver that. And, and, and it has great work incentives because it says, if I work, I get the money and I get out of poverty. And what, could, that, what more could you want? So is that through the EAPC? I mean, what do you mean it's, different it's, ways? It's, I, I, I called it the Poverty Relief Opportunity Pro-Wage Proposal. Um, it, it's what happens when um, I have a glass of red wine. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty early for that. Uh, that's great. I didn't are, write it at breakfast. Are there other ideas in that space that uh, that would be helpful? And well, I, I think you know that one. You know, that might be too much uh, on the blackboard, academic, to sort of make it straight into uh, serious policy discussion. I hope not. But you know, the EITC, mm -hmm. right? This is something that has traditionally been uh, bipartisan in nature, and right now. Uh, there's uh, you know, a, a very, very weak EITC, $400 for uh, non-custodial single people, yeah. particularly males. And, um, and there's a very important demo demonstration project we've done in New York City, mm -hmm. uh, which is topping up uh, the EITC uh, for that group. And, and, and it'll be interesting to see if it's the EITC itself, which is, is going to be enough to get better labor force participation, which has always been the, the case um, with, with uh, single moms, or if it's other things, like there's, you know, there was an earlier speaker talking about opportunity for those who, who have, in fact, um, that was Secretary Press yeah. talking about, you know, coming out of the, the prison system, getting a second chance. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, in that population, a lot of problems of that type. So maybe yeah. that's, that's the barrier to work. We have to figure that out. That's a really important issue for this country. Yeah, I should say, um, in an, another array of, uh, or manner of bipartisan work, uh, we at CAP uh, just announced a partnership with a variety of groups, um, but one of them is the uh, Koch Industries is part of a coalition funding uh, with the MacArthur Foundation uh, and Ford and other groups funding a criminal justice effort. And one of our big areas is how to ensure that um, we address this particular challenge of um, really disproportionately low-income communities where there's some criminal record which is really strikes people out of the labor force for a very long time and has really tremendous, profound implications for family structure, other issues, because if someone just can't find work for a very long time, it makes, them, it makes, very, it, makes it very difficult to form stable families. Um, so those are, that's, those are areas where I hope we'll also have additional bipartisan support. And there's a lot of interest. Rand Paul has been fantastic on yes. that issue. Yes. A bunch of Mike Lee, a bunch of very conservative senators recognizing these challenges. And there is, there is now, um, you know, in terms of the sort of uh, cultural aspects to this problem, there's now a widely recognized best practice. And that's, that best practice says finish school, get a job, then get married, then have kids. Mm -hmm. And doing it in any other order is a route to poverty. And, and I think, you know, it's hard for Republicans uh, to talk about this stuff because they get all uh, nervous about religious connotations and all that. But, but that's, those are just the data and those are the facts and I think every young person should know that. And do you see, I mean, there are, over the last couple of months, you've seen um, more conservatives uh, talking about poverty issues, obviously, you know, Democrats talking about social mobility issues. We've talked about a few areas where there's bipartisan support. I know, I mean, I know you have perhaps stronger relationships with the House and Senate majority than I do. <laughs> um, maybe. Maybe just a tad. Maybe. Uh, so, you know, what do you see happening over the next couple of months on some of these issues? Well, I, I, I think the, you know, the short version of this is it, it's a very bad idea to bet on what you think they want to do. Look at what they have to do. Yeah. And what they have to do involves some things that are central to this discussion. For example, they have to fix the Highway Trust Fund. They have to deal with the infrastructure issues, which are actually very important to, to growth and opportunity. Uh, they're going to have to deal with um, the, the Child Health Insurance Program. They're going to have to deal with the Social Security Disability Insurance Program, uh, all of which have big implications for work and, and for success. And so um, that's where I'm hoping and we'll, we'll see some, it, oh yeah, and their budget issues, but I'm, I'm hoping we'll see some genuine bipartisan reforms in those, because they aren't so big, they aren't so hard. They're, they're you know, sort of smaller problems, and, and that would be good. So we have 44 seconds, so I want to give you a chance to sure. say the one thing you didn't get to talk about yet, and I'll <laughs> say mine. Oh, I've talked about everything I want to talk about. No, uh, the most, I mean, the, the most important thing, which I think this is really emphasized, is how, uh, how much opportunity is at the core of what we need to expand and uh, focus on work, really ensuring that um, there are programs 
that are bipartisan and really involve the public and private sector like apprenticeships that we could get done if we had kind of the will to do it. And I want to um, thank this group for the chance to talk to Nira. And um, <laughs> we don't get a chance to see each other very Not much. Very often. And, and I want to close by just checking one more box and, and reminding everyone that this is uh, a country of immigrants and that one of the great opportunities that we, we face is the, the chance to reform our immigration system mm -hmm. and give everybody uh, a, a greater opportunity in the future. We can grow faster, we can level the playing field in the labor market, and we can be uh, as successful going forward as we have been historically. Thank you. Great ending, Doug.